Hi. Hi, Sheila. A very, very warm welcome to uh, Startup Grind Stockholm uh, community. We are very excited and happy to have you here with us. Thank um, you. And uh, what what we what I found uh, very interesting in uh, in when we discussed about possibility of you coming here was that I have a connection in advertising sector myself. It was my first job. I uh, out of the business school. It was. I got a strategy head position at a very fast growing ad agency in Pakistan, which is part of Publicis Group now. So, so that was a lot of time, long time ago. But, but on the same note, let's go back a few years. Uh, you have a lot of experience in advertising and creative sector. How did it start? Uh, who is Silla? We, our audience will be willing to know about that. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I grew up in a small city called Vänersborg in Västergötland. Okay. Not much to do there, uh, nothing happening. And I spent a lot of time uh, being home drawing. And uh, I, I believe I was really lucky because in that little city I found some good friends that also were interested in creativity so we did a lot of stuff together like writing theaters and uh, designing clothes and all that stuff and um, when i grew up in my 20s i felt like uh, i need to move somewhere else and then we kind of inspired each other i believe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and found out that there were actually really good design schools in stockholm so I went to Stockholm and applied for uh, Beckman School of Design, where I um, went. OK. Um, how was it uh, being part of a design school? Uh, was it a bachelor's program? Like, was it a, a particular track? Or what kind of program it was? And how did uh, that shape you? Yeah. I, I went to, I studied art direction and okay. advertising. Mm -hmm. And for me, entering that school was like opening a door to a totally <laughs> new world where I believe everyone had the belief of the, the power of creativity. And uh, mm -hmm. I thought it was so much fun. OK. And, um, and then what happened after the school? Did you then go into a job or how, how did life structure up after that? Yeah, very quickly after school, I, I got a job at that time's hottest agency in Stockholm. Uh -huh. okay. That was Paradis DDB that kind of did that revolutionary thing with the diesel jeans that kind of turned the idea on how you actually could work with uh, advertising at that time so that was a really fun place to grow up at i remember a diesel camp and it was i think uh, the smart versus stupid was it that or was it something before that yeah i mean it was we did hundreds of ads okay okay uh, and the uh, commercials and they were all very i mean before mm. the diesel jeans commercial everything was kind of lifestyle mm -hmm. but it was kind of the start of the irony era where you okay. kind of make jokes about everything. And I believe that it was a lot of fantastic art direction in those colorful posters and uh, commercials. OK. So Diesel was an interesting brand. I, I, I think Diesel is a very, very interesting brand to work on. And then what happened afterwards? Like, uh, was that your destination or did you move on? No, I was there for five years and I mm -hmm. really grew up there and learned a lot. I mean, um, Joachim Jonasson that ran that agency at that time, he mm -hmm. was really an inspiring person that um, uh, was really brave when it came to creativity. Mm -hmm. And he taught me that always think the opposite. If everyone uh -huh. goes right, you go left. And I think that's <laughs> quite a good strategy actually because you will never turn out bland or you will never hmm. be standing at exactly the same territory as everyone else yeah. so you can stand out and i think that was a good that was a really good start at my career i think that's that's really interesting when you uh, when you talk about the blend of creativity and being brave because you can't be creative if you are not brave or you're not bold with what you want to do. So I think that's really interesting. And the work against the tide, if I if we go back to Apple, it was Think Different, which kind of shaped Apple as well. Like, exactly. yes, we had, <laughs> so, exactly. 
Really interesting. Why what, should technology be boring when it could have good design and great feeling to it? Yeah, and I think that's what uh, sets Apple apart as well. And many uh, major brands, I think design is a core component of how we interact as human beings with things around us. So design is a huge influence. Yeah. Uh, Good. We come back to design later in our discussion. So after this agency, how did your career shape up? And then I moved for like half a year to London with the founder of Paradiset, Joachim Jonasson. He started a new agency there, mm -hmm. but uh, it never uh, did fly because they didn't agree. The, the English people and Swedish people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so straight after that, I went back to Sweden for Forsman and Bodenforce. Mm -hmm. And that's actually 20 years ago. Okay. Uh, so that's where I've spent the last 20 years. Okay. Now, I'll go somewhere because you mentioned something very important, uh, interesting. Like I'll just dig a little bit into that thought. You talk uh, English and Swedish people. Do you think um, there's difference when it comes to creativity or how it's communicated across cultures? I, I mean, the fundamenta, I've been mm -hmm. in international uh, um, advertising juries and so on, and I believe mm -hmm. that we have so much more in common than things that separates us. And I believe that great ideas are great mm -hmm. ideas wherever they come in. And, and um, so in this case, it was more down to individuals, I believe. Okay. So, so great point. You, you're saying that the common denominator there is a great idea and, and a great idea is, uh, spans cultures, languages. It could still yeah. go in so many different directions. Yeah. But really the people or the cultures, the way teams work, I think that's where uh, things start uh, becoming different. And I think it's the same with brands. So brands which are US based versus UK based versus local Swedish based versus Middle East based. So I think there is some cultural difference when the team uh, interaction comes into play. What's your passion? So uh, in in advertising, what is it that you enjoy? Just I've ask me. Yeah, I've thought a lot of that. First, great design. I mean, I am mm -hmm. an art director, and I believe that any good idea could mm -hmm. be killed by bad design. Okay. I mean, how we uh perceive things is super important and i think that will become more and more important mm. brands and uh, the more um, polished and great and good stuff will be because things are developing and i think that will be like you can't even survive survive as a brand without having good design in the future so mm. i think uh, that's really important but what drives the m me the most is the curiosity for people, for okay. human beings. I believe that human behavior is so interesting. I mean, we are so emotional, mm -hmm. rational. We do a lot of stupid st things. Uh, we believe we are so um, well uh, played in our minds that we uh -huh. do the right decisions and so on, but we don't. We do what everyone else do, or uh, mm. and I find that really amusing and interesting. And I think, kind of, when every new task comes at hand to solve a communication uh, mm -hmm. task, it's always the interest on how people will think and what will they will do that kind of drives me. Mm. I think for our community, uh, the, the breaking point, like I'll just take a short break here and say you made a very interesting point. And I think that's a good learning for startups out there who are listening. You talked about the two opposites, good design and uh, good idea and bad design. It could just break down. So I think that's very important for the startup community here. And I think that discussion comes up when I'm advising early stage startups because the journal engineering or the rational mindset of building startups when they go to accelerators, incubators, or, or startup coaches, they say, just get a rough looking MVP done. Now, the problem is rough looking MVP might be a good engineering design, but consumer is exposed to such a high sense level of design when they are interacting on developed platforms, you will be out of the door, out of the window, or out of whatever uh, if you go with it. So I think whenever you are developing MVPs, think about 
design as well. You cannot have an MVP which sucks on design. Just saying that. And I think the second point that you made was uh, about curiosity. I think curiosity is a is the driver for advertising, and that makes me curious a little bit about Fortman uh, Um I always have trouble speaking that out, but, but it's okay. <laughs> I thought I uh, said that well. Now, how was the experience there and any key memories from there, like something that you can remember? You spent a good, good uh, time of your professional life there, 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a, such a long time, so it's really hard to mention something. But I would say having that wider perspective, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we went from being a Swedish agency mm -hmm. to a international uh well-known player and i think that journey was fantastic to be a part of i mean in the la last couple of years we we opened up an office in singapore it was fantastic okay. to do that and and we merged with an american agency so we overnight got the uh, uh, six offices around the world and that was a really interesting and fun journey to be part of and mm -hmm. also of course uh, earlier, the uh, acknowledgement of uh, being celebrated for our work internationally, every every win was fantastic. Okay. And of course, there are some works that we are known for that has been really great throughout the years. All the Volvo work, for example, that's okay. been a part to Forsman and Bodenforce for more than 30 years that we kind of has changed the perception of that brand into a premium car, I would say today. And of course, the 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 uh, I believe it was really fun to be part of uh, having our first business to business client. That was Volvo mm -hmm. Tracks. And we we're like, no, 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 we don't work with with business to business. But they were kind of eager, and they came back, and we we're like, okay, let's do something. But then we won't do that traditional fair thing and business to business mm -hmm. uh, model that you used before. We're going to do something totally different. And then we did the epic split that is, of course, uh -huh, okay. with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was fun times when that was kind of traveling the world and it was like breaking internet. That was fun. But, but I, if I should say, if I would say one thing that mm -hmm. I appreciate the most, I believe that the the idea on how to work with creativity that has been mm -hmm. a very very collective idea, okay. where we work in small self guidance teams that kind of runs their own clients, but on the uh, that's the the base of it. But all teams need to talk to each other and show the ideas to each mm -hmm. other. And I believe that that has made the strength of uh, Forsman and Bodenfors because with helping each other mm. and trying out ideas on each other and constantly trying to make ideas better with a helping hand from the whole collective, that's a fantastic um, uh, kind of trust in each other mm. and the actual product that goes out will be so much better. And we uh, often say that every person in the office becomes 125% of their capacity. And I okay. really believe that was the case. I would never have done so much great stuff without mm. the help of all the others. But it's a very interesting point because uh, the way the words that you use, the collective, the 125% small teams, that sounds very much like the startup environment because that's how startups, because startups are pushing the bar in terms of performance and at the same time they're trying to break things, test ideas and try to see how can we fit this a little better, a little better along with the insight. So yeah. I think that's really great because the old perception of the agencies when i started the agency thing uh, in it was like uh, mid 90s uh, so it was that agencies were very silos oriented art versus client servicing versus media yes. versus strategy so it was like everybody is doing the same job of winning the clients and doing great work but we are all separated somewhere so i think that yeah, was a major 90s thing yeah and that's an environment that kind of uh, 
makes you forget about the real task doing the clients mm -hmm. work, right it it uh, it makes you focus on how to navigate the hierarchy internally mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a lot of wasted creativity in the drain I think mm -hmm. very good point and you mentioned very early like a, a few minutes ago you talked about transforming Volvo as a brand I remember like uh, in my business school we saw those uh, Volvo ads focused on the safety side, which was a very, very different positioning from what Volvo has become. So I think it takes, would you say it takes courage on the brand side as well to take ideas on? Yes. And how do you do that as an agency? If you have a great idea and you know, this could transform the brand. How yeah. do you do uh, I mean, it's, it's always humans working together and mm. it, 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 goes down to individuals you need to okay. find a lot of good individuals on both sides to be able to m make a real success story uh, and i i believe that it needs to be a good environment as well at the client side mm. so that they are open but i also believe that for volvo for example they have had that position for such a long time and kind of mm. under have understood that that position mm. was some something different from others okay M maybe this question is slightly off but uh, I'm just thinking because that epic split became a huge success like did you think that it would become something like that on digital media just people sharing it or it just yeah, happened the, 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 I mean uh, we did all our best <laughs> success because the 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 kind of construction it looks like for everyone it looks like there was only one film but there was like so many different films about the track few features and so on that was kind of in that building of communication yeah. okay okay so we, we were surprised that it was that giant hit of course yeah, I think the combination of a celebrity <laughs> on a truck versus doing something very different and artistically close to a perfect level, I think that combination kind of clicked with the consumer. So yeah. suddenly, because we see trucks as broken down, big, ugly machines, let's say, yeah. which kind of occupy entire road. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, you should have forgot about the music, the Enya yeah. track. Yeah, yeah, Enya. And yeah. And I mean, that's part of the craftsmanship. And I believe mm -hmm. design and craftsmanship is really important. Okay. Design and craftsmanship. I think that's a, I'll just note it here and we'll go deep into that point uh, going forward. How is it like working in advertising sector? Like uh, what kind of feeling one gets? I'm just trying to, because I left yeah. that sector 20 years ago. <laughs> How yeah. is it? I mean, I, I've always thought it was really fun because you meet so much people and you meet mm. new um, challenges all the time, new clients, mm. uh, and you have to dig deep and understand the totally different businesses and industries. So I mm. think it's never boring. Okay. And have things changed when you entered the uh, industry uh, yeah. as to now where we stand in the industry in 2021? Yeah, what are some say, changes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's been a slow change for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. many years, but that change has been like, uh, wow! Now there is something that's called web page. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> and now you can do banners and so on. So that has been a very slow change. So the industry mm -hmm. has been kind of the same for many many years. But I would say like the last five years. There's mm. been a huge shift, and that shift is called data. Mm. And uh, when the entrance of data came, I would say that that opened up uh, the the competition in the advertising industry because mm. all of the sudden we had a lot more different type of players. I mean, today, oh, if you say ten years ago, you could mm. only solve your marketing or communication by turning to an ad agency or mm. of course you could do some stuff in-house or yeah. you could use traditional pr and it was only the marketing uh, department in the companies that kind of took care of the marketing but nowadays when data and and social media has kind of mm. changed the rules for communication 
social media has uh, uh, made us gone from a monologue from companies to mm. a dialogue and uh, that has um, turned up the speed uh, mm. a lot and of course working with data makes you it's it's kind of a new way of doing that uh, uh, faster sales uh, mm -hmm. uh, part of the, the communication and marketing but you still need to have that brand building part of it yeah. uh, and I can see that right now there has been a very I mean everyone has heard of data and mm. everyone want to work with data yeah. people tend to forget that it that it is more to build a strong brand than just use the data mm -hmm. you need to have like 50 percent of the work you do is like the data driven work where you um, uh, do the crm stuff and uh, you uh, can analyze mm -hmm. your web page and follow up clients and so on and that can lead to a lot of great short-term sales mm -hmm, mm -hmm, really good. Mm -hmm. but the other 50% you need to spend time and um, do the work right to uh, look for your whole brand and for the long-term perception of the brand because mm -hmm. uh, today that short-term part will never build or will never invest in a stronger brand on mm -hmm. long term uh, so, so I can see that right now data has been like, wow, it's the latest. Yes, it is. And it can okay. do fabulous stuff, but it can't be the whole part of it. Uh, mm. So I'm kind of um, waiting for that uh, um, to shift over a bit again. So we kind of get a better equal to, to be able to make a strong brand because uh, strong brand are the differentiator when it in, in the long term. Okay, I think really, really interesting points for the community here. And I think uh, what you're saying about the long term and the brand side and the short term data research and optimization and the sales side, do, they are two different legs. And I think it's good to uh, even as startup founders think like that as to how you're building the brand and how you are getting results because results is something which startups still needs to deliver. Investors are on founders like get me these numbers did you meet the kpis last week or not but at the same time the larger brand will win win you the larger game an interesting point on transformation that has happened in terms of data you said you said people working like uh, agencies versus now smaller pockets of people able to run campaign and that change driven by social media because media landscape changed from print to television to later now the digital side and the dialogue side is really great so a lot of things are happening in the brand world. So are the brands confused? Like, is it too <laughs> yeah. much of a change? I'm just trying to understand <laughs> yeah. like when you meet brands, like, um, are they kind of lost or how is it? I would say that it has never been as hard as it is today to be a brand mm -hmm. owner because mm -hmm. I mean, it was easy before when it was a bit more of a silo thinking that, okay, mm -hmm. give everything to the marketing department. Yeah. But, and, and it was actually, it, it was more like before I, I can say it, it was more like communication and marketing is one thing and that could be done separately from the rest of the company's business. But today you need to look upon it in a much more holistic way. I mean, everything a company does is, mm -hmm communication and brand building or has a potential to be so you need to look up on uh, uh, all different touch points that you mm. have as a company as potential communication the staff that are working and i mean mm. you need to build that brand to attract the, the the best talent but you can also use them because they have social media and they talk about where they work and product innovation you should do product innovation mm. that goes in the same way as you want your brand to go. So it actually can, can be a um, manif manifesto of your brand and mm -hmm. it can be good communication if you 
put it out there and do PR about your product innovation and so on. So it's it's a, a totally different holistic perspective where you where you need to view on everything you have in your okay. company as potential communication, and that is much harder task for the marketing um, director than it was ten mm -hmm. years ago. And I, okay. I, I believe in that case as well, it's something, uh, communication is something that needs to be on a board level and CEO level today. Okay. So you're saying that communication is, an, uh, I think, very interesting point that you made there with innovation being aligned with the brand thinking and communication being individual, almost individual. Everybody is a communicator every business area is a communication uh, is a communication story or a journey or a tool for, for the yeah. company um, which means that branding has evolved from a responsibility side to almost something which is now ingrained in everything that the business is doing yes and okay and so that, that makes it really hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to catch on to that. Uh, maybe the, since startups are not that big, because startups start as very lean uh, products, lean teams, and uh, try to enter the market, maybe branding for them is uh, simpler, maybe just a hypothesis. Yeah, I, I, I would actually say yes, because mm. uh, you are in the, con I mean, you are much smaller. You don't have these big silos that mm. traditional companies that's been around for 20 years or 30 years have. They need to kind of reconstruct themselves to be working on the other way. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. But as a startup today, I believe you start your company and you, you have in mind the big trends or the big shifts in trends. So you, you have a digital thinking from the beginning, mm. for example or you you uh, think of sustainability from the beginning or uh, the the globalization that's a giant trend as well mm. you have in mind when you do your startup and i believe it's a little bit the same with communication as well you need to think of it as part of the whole brand and company from the beginning mm. And that is an advantage instead of being this with thousands and thousands of employees and silo organi organization. It's really hard to make that shift happen when you um, uh, have done it in another way for 30 years, for example. Yeah. And uh, I'm just trying to think of a case here and maybe uh, we can uh, kind of crack it a little bit together. Uh, a startup which is starting up, does it need a very specialist CMO skill or a marketing or a communication skill or the entire team needs to be good at it. Now that's I, a dilemma. That's yeah, to... I think that it depends on how big you are, but mm. uh, when you're really, really small, mm. uh, I believe that the whole team needs to have it. And okay. I believe, uh, I mean, when you're really small, it's, it's, uh, it's always uh, where to spend your money. Mm. Probably you want to spend most of the money in developing your product. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm just guessing, but I believe <laughs> like that. So, uh, uh, in the really beginning, I would rather pay for a couple of hours external help okay. uh, for just packaging the brand or whatever it is, and then later on putting in a marketing director. But I should be really careful about. Uh, uh, what type of level because it's many marketing directors that come from giant companies okay and and if you're thinking that oh that's a person that's a super skilled mm -hmm. working in giant organization is another thing than working in really small organizations so it's not necessary you get the best because you hire someone really expensive high level person Sometimes it's better to have more junior people, more hands on that can mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. social media and so on in the beginning. That's that's a very real and uh, point that you make over there. My main experience, for example, has been in uh, when I did marketing. Like the last position was marketing director in Pakistan for a retail company. So we had a budget of around three to four million sec every year. 
as opposed to coming to a startup which has probably a budget of three, four thousand crowns. Yeah. It, it, it's completely different dynamics. You can't go ahead and buy TV ads. You you don't have those paid ambassadors anymore. So I think it's the scale difference. So those yeah. skills might not be relevant in the oh, in the startup exactly. domain. Exactly. But, and if you if you want to have a more I mean a really good senior advice, it's better to buy a couple of hours from someone or okay. uh, doing a week project and nail it down uh, instead of hiring a really senior person. That's my advice. No, but that's really really good advice, and I think for startups here, I think uh, it's also an important point uh, whether you want to try to reinvent the wheel and try doing that over months and months and trying to get your brand right with the skills you have or should you have a professional agency or a professional come in and kind of relook at it and give you something hmm. but then the question is are startups interesting to agencies i'm just thinking like would agencies like to work with startups or not yeah, I, I believe so, because agencies see that uh, um, a lot of old businesses mm -hmm. are kind of fading out. Okay. And of course, agencies need to uh, be part of the latest. They need to have great cases uh, that shows that they are part of the latest and they need to invest in gaining new businesses and new clients. But of course, uh, I mean, when I was at Forceman, we looked at kind of s a small package, for example. How okay. can we do it really cheap so they can afford it? Uh, because, I mean, big agencies that work with big clients, it's mm -hmm. budgets, giant budgets that okay. you never afford. So um, some, some agencies could be open to make a smaller package or something. And I've also seen a little bit of a trend, especially in Sweden, that some agencies are now collaborating with business hubs or co-working spaces yeah. to kind yeah, of tap into. Yeah, that's because they see that, OK, it's a lot happening in the uh, entrepreneur world and the startup scene. Uh, and of course, they want to be a part of the new uh, business mm. life as well. And so, and, and they see that a lot of uh, startups need help with their packaging. Mm -hmm. And in your time uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the agency that you worked for 20 years, did you ever uh, have a program or something with startups or were yeah. you just working for big brands? But mostly big brands, I would say, okay. to, to feed a giant agency. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you need to have uh, uh, mostly big brands. But uh, um, sometimes we, we work with startups and smaller things that came across that we saw, thought was really interesting. Uh, and uh, I believe it's good as well because you learn totally different stuff as well because the, the yeah, it's like the marketing director thing. It's totally different. The scale makes it so different. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fundamental of it, it's the same. Have a great story and uh, get it out. But the tools that you can use are so different. Hmm. I think I'll pick the word that you just said, story. And, uh, and I think uh, something that we can discuss a little bit, let me structure it. Because startups also have multiple audiences. And why I say that is that a big business is usually trying to win the customer. That's the primary focus. Sales is the focus. And you're trying to win whatever. Maybe you have different segments of customers. So versus like children versus uh, mothers versus fathers. And those could be a family brand. And it has three segments. But startups, on the other hand, are also out there for a validity test. Does this idea really work? Is somebody want does somebody want to put money on it as an investor so that then so in startup world there's a lot of effort going into the storytelling but that storytelling is not the consumer side that's the investor side mm. uh, it's the pitching side yeah uh, and then possibly that story is more vision focused and less product focused it's like how the startup would evolve versus a story for the end customer so startups mm. actually have two jobs, maybe a third job. I'm saying uh, maybe a startup founder needs to be there. 
yeah is that complicated yeah no but i believe i think you're onto something when you talk about the story because i if there's something i would um, give away today or or uh, mm. want everyone to bring with them it's that first thing you should do is focus on your story because when you don't have that big wallet of media money to spend your mm. story is all your potential i mean okay. you, you have started for a reason you have an idea on uh, uh, why you have done this startup so you you kind of already have your story and of course you have gone to investors with your story but take your story and look upon it with the eyes of someone out there. My mother, for example. Uh, it should be someone uh, that you think um, it should be easy to understand. And it needs to be, you need to write your story down and you need to have the perspective. Uh, it should be easy told. So think of it as the elevator pitch for my mother. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay. And it has to have, um, you need to look upon your story in a bigger context. How okay. can your product or uh, company help other people? How mm. can um, it help society? Mm -hmm. How can it um, be interesting for your future employees? Mm -hmm. uh, how can it be a fun and inspiring story to tell that kind of makes heartbeats and uh, get the pulse going mm -hmm. for people and try to write that story down because that is your communication um, weapon, I would say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you will be so dependent on PR because that's for free yeah and that people are willing to share and talk about your story and listen to it in social media because that can also be for free mm. or it could be if it has a great power i mean of course you can buy ads and so on in social media mm -hmm. and that can give you a lot of value for money money if you have a really strong story so i i believe that's the fundamenta okay Focus on your story to get that inspiring and put it in a bigger context so you can kind of how can a lot of people benefit from what we are doing well, this is re really interesting because traditional startup processes it's like you just sit together and start creating a product. And then when such product starts getting created, your entire idea is taking shape. And then you try to write a story around the product. Yeah. And it becomes too ordinary. Well, what you are saying is that maybe the first task for a co-founding team is to just block out everything, sit in an empty room, for example, so that there is no, uh, how would you say, external stimuli, and then craft that story together yeah and craft that story as if you would tell it for someone totally not interested in your business hmm. how should they kind of wow that's interesting i want to be part of that or i want to buy that thing and wow that can help a lot of people in my community okay Very and there's one more thing that i think it's really um, important as well it's it's something that we have worked a lot with at Forsman that we call the the headline test uh-huh okay it's it's I mean it's it's actually kind of answering the question if it's PR -able. okay will it fly in PR so uh, when you write your story mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Think of it as a headline on a wall poster for a newspaper. Okay. Where it's like, this thing has happened. Okay. So it has to kind of, you have to try to see, will it be like, okay, nothing, I don't care. Or will it be something you care of? Okay. Will it say, wow, that's something new. Okay. 
Uh, it's a hard test, but, but no, no, it's really good. <laughs> it's a very good idea test. We, we in Forsman, we tested all our ideas. Like, is is this a fun idea? Uh, it got lame. Uh huh. Uh huh. So headline test. I think the, the in in pitching we uh, we call something uh, elevator pitch. I think that's the ultimate test. We use tools like NABC, which is Stanford Research Institute. Based. But I think headline test is a very visual way. So imagine that you are on a newspaper and you say they created this and it did this. And yes, it goes back exactly. to uh, and what yeah. you were saying. I think thinking the larger context is very important. Uh, yes. that's where the uh, if we go to so i'm trying to connect it with the traditional coaching that startups are getting so yes. when, uh, so generally uh, advisors and accelerators are pushing them on finding out the why and uh, and and the problem that they're trying to solve and from the ad world and the marketing world you're saying the bigger context and then finding an audience like your mother you said so yeah. somebody who can find that to be inspiring why, why I said my mother, it wasn't because she was probably the right target group. It was more like when it comes to communication, mm. you need to narrow down, narrow down. Okay. Uh, you can't communicate um, 20 things at the same time. It has to be one thing. It has to be really simple because people think of what they will eat for dinner or need to pay the loans of the house. They don't care of your product. Mm. but that's why you need to be very very single-minded and be something so that's why i told my mother but i think one more thing that mm. i think is really important as well as a as a good advice mm. is to to use there are a lot of big trends going on in the society mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that people kind of uh, take part in or you take part in a discussion around whatever it could be like the sustainability trend or it's not a trend it's it's a huge shift actually yeah. but it could be an outdoor trend we see is really big for the moment or moving to house is big or uh, there's a trend moving out from the bigger cities in sweden or you can find a lot of different trends mm. and these trends are like uh, trains imagine you're standing like this and it's like trains rushing by all the okay. time and it's trains of trends so if you have your story clear mm. uh, you should look up on your story and see what kind uh, of big trends does this story fit into mm. and then you should kind of hook on to these trains because they will give you bigger audience that you can achieve by yourself mm. and, um, they will give you much more speed by hooking on to different trains like this you will come much much further than you would do by just standing isolated on your own mm -hmm. trying mm -hmm. to shout so if you could be a piece of puzzle in a discussion mm -hmm. of these big trends you kind of find target groups and you find a lot of uh, things by identifying that I will give you an example. You, you, uh, some of you probably know that we uh, were um, helping Oatly building their brand at Forsman mm, and mm, mm. And I mean, uh, together with them, we isolated uh, a couple of trends, like the veganism is a big trend, mm. and the, the climate changes. It's not a trend, but it's a shift, uh, and it's a big topic that many people discuss. And uh, by linking the milk industry mm -hmm. and the oat product into these discussions, tapping in there, you already found the audience. It was kind of, it gives itself. And, and you also find a lot of people that want to take part in the discussion when you put ads or mm -hmm. in social media out there. So trains of trends is something you should think of. Okay. This is really, really useful. What what you're saying, because because we started, we uh, we went very deep into story. I think, sto and that's where we talked about how do you build a story, and then we picked up the discussion on the the trains of trends and how to hook on to them to kind of expand your audience, and then the headline test. I think this is for uh, uh, startups listening in. I think three anchor points for you uh, get your story right 
think about the trends because maybe you are too narrowly focused on the product so you we when you get product focused you kind of exclude so much external context out of it so i yeah. think catching on to that trends is important uh, and going on to the uh, headline level because you also need to bring all that into a very simple inspiring thought and not write 10 different things which won't make sense to anyone yeah so, i would say like like uh, uh, just a great example uh, yeah. uh, is such a great example in many many ways mm. but but looking upon the trends that you have around you and put yourself and your story in a bigger context from the beginning they were an oat milk for mm -hmm. people that had problem with uh, drinking normally normal milk so it was kind of a very limited spot they stood on uh, but when the, we change mindset and said okay let's be a lifestyle product for the people that uh, uh, are part of these big trends then we expanded the area to be on so it got much much larger and i think that that is something that a mm. lot of startups could benefit from okay thinking, maybe you start thinking small or traditionally in an area but you could really expand your area by taking on new glasses okay so i think that's 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 a great insight for everyone listening in um i'll move to q a with one last point i see amanda is also logged in she uh, we are co-founding something called brim and we are very thankful for your feedback on that uh sela because we what we are trying to do is just for the community we are trying to build a brand powered impact platform and uh, and the word that we want to uh, bring in from there is, is impact something which is very relevant for brands? Yes. Going forward. Definitely. And how should brands approach it? I, I believe, I, I uh, always talk about the digitization, uh, the globalization and the shift, sustainability shift. Mm. And I think these three trends, they are giants. They are so big that are that you can't even think of them as trends but okay. i think that all companies that will be a part of the future uh, business world mm -hmm. need to think uh, okay. of their position in these three fields so sustainability definitely and impact world okay i'm just trying to see if i can find marina here marina you can come in for the q a but i don't see you here so maybe okay maybe a connection issue so no problem we will now take some audience questions let's see let me go up the feed a little bit uh hold on uh, i'm founder of ceo of gamification hi and you had a point there i'm just picking quick questions i'm, I'm here representing garage legal co-founder welcome let's uh Okay, hold on. It'll take one minute because uh, <laughs> what's your, uh, so Luis has a question. What's your advice on showing up the value of an early impact startup where our solution is only a small part of the solution? Meaning we are helping digitalize a mass, ma massive gap on data collection on water in Africa, though data is piece of a much larger puzzle of solving challenges such as flood warnings and adapting to do climate change. Mm, I so, should talk about, uh, I, I shouldn't be too shy to not talk about the bigger uh, picture. I mean, mm -hmm. you're part of that bigger picture. Talk about the bigger picture because that's what uh, makes people's emotion going. And that's kind of, even though you're a part of solving the problem, you are solving the problem. So I think you should pick the bigger picture. Okay. So uh, even if you are not... So you should talk about the big thing. And I think that goes back to what you were saying. The bigger context is very important. And then those trends are very important to hook on because trends are also big things. So, OK, so startup is small. Pick big anchor points so that people can relate to what you can become rather than yes, what exactly. you are today. OK, exactly. Uh, we have uh, Lesek is saying, Silla, do you believe that companies and brands have to transform into impact businesses mainly because of consumer pressure to do good or at least don't do bad things to the society? How is how will this shift look like? Yes, yes I totally. I mean, I, I think that Greta was a turning point for that. Uh, 
Mm. Uh, the, the scientists has been uh, talked about this for 30 years. And uh, I can actually tell you why scientists aren't good at communication. <laughs> okay. When you work with science, everything is equal. All different learnings you have is equal. So you want to talk about everything at the same time. But communication is about making things simple. And Greta, she was making things simple because she was uh, doing that warning thing and her whole personality is good communication because she was so not expected to mm, be that young yeah. little girl standing in her non-fancy clothes and so on. But she was really, I mean, I think she is everything that good communication are. She okay. was really single-minded when she week after week stood there, uh, stood there with her placard and mm. she always leaned to the, what the scientists said. So uh, kind of a little bit extra turn. But, but uh, I think that um, that raised the awareness among people. And uh, the, um, we often talk about social tipping points. And they yeah. say that when 25% of a group of people uh, believes in something, then it all turns over. And I mean, now uh, the climate changes is here and everyone has agreed that they are real now. Mm. And uh, I mean, that's a shift three years ago. It wasn't that picture at all. Mm. A lot of people mm. were like, nah, nah, it's just warmer this year or nah, nah, it's not true. And uh, that kind of the social media shift that we have uh, seen has uh, given the people the power. So it's instantly companies will know if they do wrong today and we have all seen what happens when when there's um, a hunt going on for a company that did mm. wrong it can be devastating and it could happen overnight so i don't think companies de de dare any longer to not do right and i think that all boardrooms today mm. have sustainability really really high on their agenda and I am positive and I think a lot of changes will be. And mm. I wouldn't do a startup today without having the sustainability part kind of covered or thinking on. Okay. Okay. I think very, very good point on building a startup ground up from sustainability side and also the corporate side where you're saying even the boardrooms, they are now thinking sustainability. So sustainability is very in, but I'll go back to something which you said very interesting, like Greta, like having so much single pointed focus on what you're doing, being very simple. So I think that's, that's a great inspiration for startups on how they're building their founder brands. Can they stand for a cause? Because then that probably would start reflecting in the brands that they are trying to build or the business they are trying to build. So for founders as well, I think Greta is a great example of being focused and being out there with what you believe in. Yes, and being very constant. And I would say if you want to start working with sustainability or kind of have a check up on your startup, you should use the 17 UN uh, sustainability goals mm. and you should pick one, two, three, that really matches with your business mm -hmm. and then hold on to them because you don't need to cover them all. Okay, got it, brilliant. We have a couple of more questions. We have overrun the time. So so, so community members who want to go, uh, it's fine. We'll just take these uh, last couple of questions. When working in small teams all and developing ideas and feedbacking to each other, any insights on how the winning idea is decided? When uh, teams are working and yeah. Yeah, we, we have always have the rule that the, the small team that are kind of owning the client, mm. they have the final decision because someone has to have the final decision. Okay. But they really need to listen and take in <clears throat> uh, what the other people are saying, but okay. they have the final decision. Okay, got it. Silla, what does the authenticity in the marketing and branding mean to you? In your experience as a company, have to compromise with their evolutionary purpose, their why, to be able to get their story out? Uh, it... The second, like uh, Tobias is asking. Uh, yeah, if what they does... compromise with them. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I believe that you need to be authentic today. Uh, okay. you, you need to get 
that the same if I understand the question right I don't mm. think that you could tell something and then go for something else that, that will never be great today okay and in startup there is in startup world there's a philosophy which is advocated by a lot of pitching coaches like fake it till you make it yeah. I don't know because uh, that's the exact opposite of the authenticity I, I'm not sure if that's a blanket advice you can give to a startup that fake it yeah. no. I mean, I mean, of course, I have done a lot of fake it till you make it as well, because sometimes everything doesn't need to be perfect. You need mm. to go move on. But I mean, uh, doing building a brand is not a sprint game. It's mm. a marathon. You don't do it overnight. So, so as long as you have the the longer sight or the, the your compass to the right uh, mm -hmm. way where you are heading, uh, it will it will be right. Okay, I think that's a very good food for thought for everyone. And last point, how do you stand out as a brand when all companies start jumping on the same trends and major shift? Okay. Yeah, think differently. <laughs> think different, okay. Yeah, think the opposite. When they go red, you go blue, or when they go north, you go south. I mean, if everyone says we're the best digital, blah, 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 find a new perspective mm -hmm. to talk about that thing. I mean, think how Oatly did it. They stopped talk about bad stomachs and not uh, mm -hmm. drinking milk because you wanted to drink milk, but you couldn't. Because then you only got second best. They kind of uh, did like this and like, come on, we will pick another fight. So try to pick another fight. Try to pick another fight. Great. Great message, Silla. And uh, I'll really like to thank you for being here and joining us today for this amazing 360 degree around advertising, marketing, <laughs> creativity, art direction, building brands, authenticity. So I think we covered so many topics. So like, what a rich, uh, I would say, um, yeah, what a rich uh, ideas filled session. So, so thank you so much for making it so exciting. Uh, thank you all in the community for being here and joining us. I'll be sending details of our upcoming events and especially our uh, startup program, which startups can benefit from in Startup Grind. Uh, on Amanda's behalf as well, we'll really like to thank you about, you, uh, about your interesting uh, feedback on Brim, the product uh, uh, which is out there. So thank you so much, Silla. Thank you uh, to the team and thank you all our wonderful listeners. Have a very, very good day. It was fun. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.